Hello everyone from each of the 24 countries tuning in and welcome to the EdTech podcast. In this episode we talk to primary school teacher and computing coordinator Tolu Oyanola about Pionki and Scratch, whether Minecraft is an infuriating fad or an awesome learning platform, why knowing how to code is good for your career as an educator and why it's okay for your students to know more than you about almost everything to do with computing. But before we begin, some very exciting news. The EdTech podcast this week was chosen by iTunes as a new and noteworthy podcast this in podcasting is the holy grail so thank you thank you thank you for listening sharing and generally being amazing it makes this exciting journey of who knows where it will end even more fun and if you enjoy the podcast and would like to leave a review and rating on itunes that would be absolutely amazing and i'd be eternally grateful so on with the show My name is Tolu Oyinola and I'm the computing coordinator at Lauriston School. Awesome. And what does that mean on a kind of day-to-day level? Day-to-day level, it just means that I oversee the teachers and learning of computing and coding and ICT-based learning in the school, really. Okay. And then in terms of sort of that assisting teaching in the school, what do you say are the most successful initiatives that you have here and some of the ways that you keep on top of technology as a way of enhancing learning? I'd imagine some of the most successful things we've done in school is our use of different softwares to help us with our coding, such as Pionki, which is like an alternative version of Scratch, okay. and which has allowed children to use the iPads to code, which uh, iPads tend to be a lot more reliable in our school. And the kids have really taken up and have been very enthusiastic about it. And using those iPads, are those owned by the school or are they yeah, BYD? Yeah, they're owned by the school. Um, we've got two key apps we use for different year groups or different phases. Key Stage 2 tend to use Pionki and Key Stage 1 use um, Scratch Junior. Okay, and how about things like Raspberry Pi? Or- oh, Raspberry Pi, <laughs> that's definitely because like computing is fairly new in schools and we're still in the early stage of just trying to get to grips of it because I know that is a biggie for a lot of teachers, including myself even, how to best teach it, use it and teach it. I can definitely see in the years going on that we use Raspberry Pi because I've seen some of the some of the things it can do and it does look incredible. So your role is also as a teacher. Yeah. So how did you come to take on this extra role of coordinating the, the technology side of things? To be really honest, it's more like <laughs> I was the only one that can really do it confidently in terms of coding. And I guess a unique, it's a skill set which has really benefited to me because um, it's now... My role, my big role now is really trying to help teachers in this school as much as possible to build up their confidence. Yeah. And again, teach computing in ways that will help them and help the children. And how do you go about that? So one of the things I've done on several occasions is that I team teach with other teachers when they're doing computing. So I might tag along and and join in the lessons with them and show them how I might um, go about teaching the lesson and some of the pitfalls that I face and even look for advice from them even how what would work best in any given class so it's a case of just sharing practice talking about it and learning from mistakes. How did you um, also have an experience in coding in the first place? Yeah it's more self-taught it's one of those things where I knew it was coming in yeah. terms of into the curriculum and it's one of the things where you're looking to it to develop your knowledge but it is quite um, addictive as well because it's like wow I'm actually creating something and then you begin to experiment with different things and I think one of the reasons why coding is so fun really is the fact that kids is self-motivating kids want to do it kids want to compute they want to create their own games or levels or design their own characters and that kind of enthusiasm in a way it makes it easier for teachers to teach it you mentioned the the students that the children are are really into it have you had any level of resistance from other teachers or from parents have you got any advice for others in your situation who have to go on that journey as well yeah i can only say that like because the children are so passionate about it and so many of them probably do not at home already it's just an easy way to teach and yes definitely the kids will probably know more than you and that's okay as well it's one of the things that i love about computing there'll be children who say well you can do this instead and it's like almost like it levels so the get, playing field you get the benefit out of it as well definitely 
The other thing I was going to ask for anyone else that's listening and, and wants to pick up some ideas from this, mm. where do you get your knowledge from on keeping up with these things? Is it website or is it speaking um, to other people, yeah. learning trust? I'm very fortunate because um, the Hackney Learning Trust, uh, which is a body that sort of aids schools with whether it's professional development or resources or things like that, they've got a, like a, a session where like coordinates such as myself will go every half term to be up to date be, to be kept up to date or to be further educated on the newest things or good practice so that's been absolutely essential for me and it's been amazing because it's really allowed me it's boosted my confidence and hopefully I'll be able to share that those new ideas and that enthusiasm I have as well with, with teaching stuff. So the Lauriston is not an academy, is that right? No. And obviously uh, the Learning Trust, we spoke about that. I spoke about that with Jeremy in terms of what their future is. I mean, what are your hopes in terms of continuing that relationship? I really hope that that continues going on and not just for lead teachers, but for other stuff as well I think just being in a forum where people can share ideas or talk about the difficulties they faced it's just so yeah it's so important and so powerful so we mentioned coding before the so learning coding use those platforms you were mentioning what specifically do you do in terms of activities so I think you mentioned creating characters and that kind of thing what's the kind of average lesson plan in that way oh good question <laughs> um in my class year three we had to our first task was to create an animation actually up until that point I've never made I've made games, but yeah. I've never made an animation before, so I actually had to learn that quick tips here and there. And we're also quite fortunate because I have a scheme of work which has like lesson plans and some quick like one minute tips for teachers for, for them to know basic skills. Okay, brilliant. And and before we started recording, you mentioned that you used to go to Hackney Community College. I did. So that's the full raft because we've had principal of Hackney Community College speak. We've had Jeremy from the Learning Trust. Now we're having you. We've got Tolu. Just uh, Tolu. Yeah, Just Tolu. Yeah. <laughs> All the superstars of Hackney education. So... What, what did you study at Hackney Community College and how did you get to your Gosh, point here? Hackney Community College, wow. Yeah, um, I, I loved Hackney Community College, yeah. I studied, what did I study? I did, I did like five A-levels, so I just studied English, English Literature and Language. I studied Law, I studied Media Studies, I studied Sociology and I studied Psychology. And yeah, it was a, it's a brilliant building, great learning facilities, really good staff and it's just a great learning environment. And, that, and now when you're sort of teaching the primary school children mm. and you're getting them excited about coding, etc., what do you see their aspirations are? I mean, are they excited about going into worlds that are enabled through digital skills and that kind of thing? That's a very good point because in a way, that's one of the things I'm really excited about and is that I have to, as a practitioner, open their eyes to see the, the application of computing in the real world because one of the things that I want to do one day in the future probably next year even is the idea of coding for robots like you can actually see they can literally see their code have an effect on like a, a model and then what they say the robot repeats it or it might track their movements yeah <laughs> and that I could just imagine kids going whoa yeah. but they really get to see that it's built in everywhere from traffic lights to how we organise like the register, um, it's just, it is there and just seeing the, the practical benefits of it would just be really good, really encouraging. So that's really exciting because um, in the interview with the CEO of Here East, so Here East is the digital creative space in the Olympic Park in mm. what was the former broadcasting centre. And they are having the, I think it's the UCL Institute of Robotics move in there. Okay. And they're looking to connect with local schools. So uh, uh, it might yeah, be a good definitely. match. Definitely. I would there. love yeah. to take part in that. Okay. Totally. I've actually done some, um, is it with UCL, the university itself? I believe so, yeah. Because um, I've, I've um, done some projects with UCL, I think just last summer actually, where it was, uh, it was called a Spark Festival, I think. And again, that was about engaging with the community and getting them excited about engineering and yeah so I'd, I'd love to be part of that actually. do you go to any other events like that which are about robotics or yeah um, spaces, i volunteered for the barclays coded dojo okay. and that was a really good experience because i got to i get to see how again corporations are and are helping children to code and what they're doing and just seeing just really, really enthusiastic children and just 
just spending hours just cold and seeing what they produce is just really exciting. It's, 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 it's amazing. <laughs> so, so what was the format of that? Was that based at their... Yeah, like it was based at the Canary were... Wolf um, okay. um, building. And, and so they had lots of coding experts? Yes, or? yeah, definitely. I'm actually f- friends with one of the person who actually ran it. Well, so what happened was, they, I think it started at like 10 or 9, I think it's probably 10, literally from 10 to like 2, the kids were just coding and... They had bowls of sweets, which kept them <laughs> really, <laughs> really hyperactive. Really hyperactive, but they were they were again. What made it really good was that the parents were there too, and there was a lot of volunteers to support around as well. And it was just a very good environment. I mean, just seeing them get support and build, and then just be making things. It's just yeah, it was really good. And is that like an annual event? Or? I think it takes place every term, okay. but. I don't know too much about it in terms of how frequently it is. Yeah, done. okay, wonderful. Kids here, are they involved in things like Minecraft as well? Or yeah. Is that a big oh, thing? <laughs> for better or for worse, yes, they are involved in Minecraft. It's <laughs> what, why so better or for, worse? For is it quite okay. all-encompassing? Or? It's, well, it, I suppose it's one of those things, one of those fads at the moment, I okay. imagine. I'm just waiting until it dies down. <laughs> I don't know. For me, I, I, I think this is my almost like my game habit kicking in. I'm thinking when I look at Minecraft, I think it just looks like a really, really dated, very blocky based character. But the kids absolutely love it. But again, it's something that has helped them and it's allowed them to really appreciate creating stuff and meeting people. So, you know, Perfect. that's its benefits. I suppose the onus of the podcast episode that I'm looking at at the moment is about schools in Hackney, the, I suppose, turnaround story of education in Hackney in the last sort of less than 20 years and the influx of tech initiatives in the borough. So we talked about Hearys just a minute ago and you talked about Barclays as well. Are there any other examples where you kind of collaborate with tech initiatives in the borough or at the moment is it still quite just the day-to-day in the classroom? Yeah, there that hasn't, kind of thing? to my knowledge, there hasn't been any major collaborations other than my other than the work I've done with Barclays called a dojo. Yeah. We do have one of the people as part of it who does Cold Club in the school so he's brought some of the oh, expertise cool. and he does a club with the children I help out with that as well is that so. like every month or every week every week, week. every week that's yeah, fantastic every, every week um, again it's another very popular club with the children and do you find that boys and girls kind of get into it or is it yes yeah. definitely oh, that's which really is good. fantastic and I'm actually trying to get more of a push to try and get a bigger ratio of girls and boys actually but it's definitely both both genders really enthusiastic about it yeah. which is good Excellent. really good so if people want to, if people are listening on the sort of tech initiative side of things mm. and they're interested to help collaborate with you, is that something that you're interested in? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Up? Because again, a lot of it, as I was saying before, it's a benefit for me because I'm learning more. Yeah. Yeah. And this is it's fairly, it's really new in the curriculum. And I'm excited to see it de- mature and develop as the years goes on. So I want to learn more. The children want to learn more. I want to learn from the children. The children learn from adults and family so it's yeah definitely it's reverse mentoring reverse mentoring I love that really good collaboration yeah, Co- yeah. yeah. and so if people <laughs> want to get in contact what's the best way for them to to get in contact with you or just contact up? the school get my, my email address on the website as well but just uh, ask for a computing coordinator or email the school about any type of workshop you want to do and who they should contact but normally I'll be really keen on that kind of thing thank you very much you're welcome And if you enjoyed that, make sure you subscribe to the EdTech Podcast on iTunes. Thanks for listening and see you next time.